Home isn't a place. It's a person. And that person is you. Home is your soul. Your intrinsic nature of being. Your energy, free of humanity's clouded perception that you so eagerly adopted, is raw. It's rare. It's fluid. It's authentic. And you're afraid of it because you ran from yourself for so long. The race to see how far away you can get from yourself is over. Home has been patiently waiting for you. What does your home look like? Is it full of filth and grime because you've neglected it for so long? Is it a place of love? Of acceptance? Is it a place of confusion? Resistance? Is it no longer safe? Is it slowly fading? Do you no longer recognize the infrastructure? A place long gone from your memory, little to no familiarity with the place you used to know so well. Returning home after so much effort of running from it initially doesn't come with ease, but the ease slowly reveals itself the deeper you dive into self, the deeper you're rooted in self. Stripping yourself free of humanity's perception of you will bring you closer. Detaching from outdated versions of yourself will bring you closer. Letting go of resistance will bring you closer. Disconnecting to reconnect, mending, reconstructing this place you call home will bring you closer. When you get lost, remember, you can always return. Something I realized along the line was that I wasn't who I thought I was. I have always been the person who, I guess, and we're talking goal-wise, career-wise, and kind of just what I wanted out of life. I was the person who kind of knew what I wanted, who not necessarily had it figured all figured out, but I knew what I wanted. I was on what people would consider a straight path. But I realized I didn't know who I actually was. I was the product of who the world told me I was. You know, from birth, as human beings, we are domesticated. We are surrounded by, you know, family and really just a limited amount of people. And we're, in a sense, forced to have the same thoughts, not necessarily the same thoughts, but the same beliefs, the same values, the same ways of living, of habits, as the people we call our family. As the people who raise us. I know personally there are so many beliefs that I thought were my beliefs. Because I believed that thing for so long. But when I started to grow and evolve and develop a sense of self. I realized I only thought this thing or only acted this way. is because my mother acted this way. Or my grandmother acted this way. And I learned that my sense of being really wasn't a reflection of my soul. It was a reflection of the domestications that were placed on me. We also develop our sense of self and identity in a sense. Yes, identity. Identity is the word I'm looking for based on how, I guess based on our interactions and based on how other people treat us. It's one of those things that I am what you say I am. You know, when we think about, and I've said this before, you think about a compliment someone gave you, or it doesn't even have to be a compliment, a characteristic somebody gave you. You know, we, 
automatically i know i have in the past automatically adopt that thing or become let that thing become a part of my identity even if i didn't really relate to it does that make sense that was something that i used to do a lot in the past and it's so detrimental to your being your sense of self your self-esteem your confidence I'm not saying this in a way of like criticism, constructive criticism, respectful criticism, constructive criticism, or even opinions from other beings. Like, cause that's going to happen because when you exist in a world with other beings, things like that happen. But I'm saying it in a sense of not allowing people's opinions about you and your actions shape how you feel about yourself. Because I was so guilty of doing that and it hurt me so bad. Another reason why you aren't who you think you are is because the media, the media, man, and all the various platforms of media that we consume is literally executing high level propaganda, shaping not only the way we feel about the world and the events happening in the world, but it shapes the way we feel about ourselves. It's shaping our sense of self. And not only is it shaping our sense of self, but it's also planting seeds in our heads. It is giving us things to think about. It's telling us what to think about. That's why it's so important to be intentional with the media you do consume. And that's also why it's important to consume media in moderation. And a lot of times, most of the time, when it comes to like, propaganda and the media we consume it's not like evident you know what I'm saying it's not like in your face it's hidden it's sneaky it's the small things that we don't even consider a threat to our mental health to our peace but they are the biggest threat another reason we don't see it or feel it is because we have consumed this type of media for so long but for me personally after some point I started when I, you know, when I reached a certain level of self-awareness, I was just like, you know, this isn't making me feel good. I don't like how this is making me think. I don't like how it's impacting the way I live my life. Whether it, ha whether it have been, you know, television, Instagram, who I was following, whatever the case may be. And it was definitely an eye opener and I had to make a decision to eliminate those things from my life because I was tired of being controlled. Like the, it, it didn't, it did not feel good. And I, I had had enough. I think it's easy for humans to be toyed with is because at the really, at a really core level, a really basic level, we just simply want to be loved. We simply want to be accepted. I think generally speaking, there's a lack of self-love and self-acceptance that we have as humans. And it really just ignites the desire to be loved and accepted by other beings outside of ourselves. This has led me to a lot of not so good places, a lot of fucked up places and I made a vow to myself that I would never go back to those places again, whether it be looking for love in a person, a thing. And it goes unconscious. Like a lot of what I'm saying is unconscious. But I made a vow to consciously love, embrace, and accept myself on all levels because looking for it elsewhere leaving my acceptance and the love of self in the hands of other beings it ain't it it, it just is not it we do things and we say things and we morph and transform into things that we are not all in the name of acceptance all in the name of love and we lose ourselves in order to be accepted when it's not even necessary. You don't have to lose yourself to be loved. You don't have to lose yourself to be accepted. We then get to a point where society's perception of us 
outweighs our own perception of self, which really sucks and is ass backwards. Like, don't make sense at all. But I know so many of us are living life this very way. And you wonder why there are so many people who just can't find satisfaction in their existence. Because humanity, they still pop on fireworks. And that's fine, you know, it's okay. But it's because humanity's perception, no, it's because you've internalized humanity's perception of you. And now, like, you got to keep up. You got to keep doing things. You got to keep transforming. You got to keep people pleasing. We begin to obsess over everything that we do. We ultimately just obsess over ourselves, our appearance, our actions, our thoughts, our interests, every little thing. When I don't think humans were meant to be like viewed on a microscopic level like that, even when you are viewing yourself. There were times I would get up in the mirror, especially when my skin was breaking out really bad. I would get up, look in the mirror. And like just stare at my skin and like look for all the flaws because it's just like, well, if I am flawed, no one will accept me. No one will love me. But really the issue was I didn't love my flaws. I wasn't in a space where I loved myself unconditionally. So I was afraid that other people would not love me unconditionally. Obsessing of yourself is a very unhealthy trait that I am releasing I'm releasing it there's no good in it we lose ourselves in that process because it all goes back to trying to please other people trying to be enough trying to be worthy trying to be accepted trying to be loved when the love is internal it's eternal it's infinite it's within you all of these things can make you forget who the fuck you are on a surface level you think you know yourself but because of so many of the things that we have experienced in this life we make it a habit we make it tradition we make it ritual okay to run from ourselves but nah we're done doing that on another level we lose ourselves to the physical the tangible you know to matter and this steers us away from our spiritual selves which is ultimately our truest selves I feel like when in conversation you know casual conversation you hear I'm a doctor but okay who are you though I went to Berkeley okay who are you though I'm a mom Okay. Who are you, though? I do think we allow titles to identify us, to define who we are. Of course, you know, being a doctor, going to an amazing school, or being a mom, these things matter. They're beautiful. They are all beautiful things. They're definitely something to be proud of, but they're not your sole identity. When you identify, you attach. And let me tell you, your spirit has depth. Your soul is way, 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 way expensive. So much more expensive than the physical things, than the tangible things, than matter. Your soul is way more expensive than that. But you have to allow that room, that space for growth. You can't allow yourself to attach to the physical things in life, to the titles in life. Again, that's beautiful, but that is not all that you are. There is way more to your soul than your job title. So now it's like, I don't know who I am. (laughs) How do I mend this relationship with myself? What does that look like? I think a few ways to really, really get to know who you are is through stillness, detachment, and service. 
But I do want to back up, though, a little bit. I think you first have to become aware of yourself and aware of your actions. To me, when I think about wellness and spirituality and finding yourself, all the terms that we often hear in this space, it all goes back to self-awareness. Self-awareness is the very first step. It's a very, to me, basic step. It's a step that we all should, we all do actually inherently have, but we just forgot how to be aware of ourselves because we spend so much time being on autopilot, doing everything because that's how we always done it. Thinking that same thought because it's all, it's what we always thought. (sighs) It's going from autopilot to divine consciousness. And when I say self-awareness, I mean in a very non-judgmental way. I don't mean, you know, oh my God, I was doing this thing. I've been doing this quote unquote negative habit or I've been conforming or whatever the case may be. It's not being judgmental. It's simply being an observer of your thoughts and your actions. It's giving yourself grace through this process. It's not an opportunity to beat up on yourself. It's not an opportunity to talk negative to yourself. It's actually the quite the opposite of that. Sending yourself love and grace. Becoming aware, non-judgmentally aware of all of the things that you thought you believed. And those beliefs didn't necessarily align with your soul. Noticing, noticing, noticing. Literally, the simple act of noticing will really fuck around and change your entire life. It will fuck around and change your entire perspective. It will fuck around and change your entire way of being, of living. Divine consciousness is... It's truly the real flex. And this space of self-awareness takes a lot of unlearning, giving yourself the space to have the opportunity to unlearn, not be so attached to what we knew, attached to how we currently think and view the world. Because let me tell you, there is no expansion in being closed-minded. There is no expansion in being stubborn or so stern on the way you currently live and view life. There is no growth in any of it. So you definitely have to be willing to start with a clean slate. It's to me, it's actually fun. I'm really a nerd. But that is actually fun to me to have the opportunity, which we have this opportunity with every breath, every moment to start fresh, start new, forget about the past, our experiences that kind of shaped this way of thinking and living that isn't quite in alignment with our soul. It takes practice, but it is doable. I am currently living it. It's been a difficult journey, but it's one that I think, well, life is showing me. It's a journey that's worth it. Stillness will allow you to mend your relationship with yourself. We don't take the time to be still. And what I mean by stillness, what I mean by stillness is, again, noticing the sounds outside of your window, the birds chirping, the wind blowing and kissing your skin. It could be meditating, noticing your thoughts, observing your thoughts, watching the thinker, not attaching to those thoughts, taking the time to just sit still, free your mind of every thought that may or may not be yours, every experience that you've been holding on to, every everything. Stillness is all about getting in the moment, having gratitude for the moment, enjoying and appreciating the current moment. I spent a lot of my life living either too far in the past or too far in the future. And let me tell you, it made my anxiety be on 10. I noticed like when I'm anxious, I'll be like, okay, what are we? I, I just, 
allow myself to get grounded and ask like what are we thinking about right now what is in our subconscious that we're not fully recognizing and typically it's something from far from my past that I haven't necessarily quite resolved or worked through or something in the future that I'm worrying about being still allows you to release the worries of the future and the attachment of yesterday one of the biggest things that I do is I just breathe I take a moment to take a conscious breath be still take it all in and I know it sounds cheesy I know a lot of people say it but it makes a big difference and if you are somebody that has tried it you know it makes a big difference in that moment through stillness the smoke starts to clear and you start to truly see who you are, what you desire, what you want out of this life. And you start to actually like recognize your soul and your spirit on a deeper level. And when you reach that point, you your your spirit and your soul can guide you. I'm at a point in my life, in my journey where I'm going to listen to my spirit. I'm going to listen to spirit. I'm going to listen to my gut. I'm going to listen to my intuition. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to allow my soul to guide me, even when my soul feels wrong, even when logically my soul ain't really making sense. I still allow my soul to guide me because I made that time to reconnect with my soul and understand that it'll never steer me wrong. Okay, detachment, detachment, detachment. I go on and on and on and on like Erica about attachment or detachment. I don't even know where to begin because I talk about it so much. But if we want to expand and we want to grow, we want to transform and evolve. Detaching from pretty much everything is a necessary part of this process. (sighs) When you are attached because a lot of us are attached to the familiar to the comfort whether it be most of the time it's a version of ourselves right and y'all know I have a lot of experience with that not fully embracing the evolution because I didn't recognize who I was becoming it wasn't that who I was becoming who I am becoming was bad it was just that it was different than what I was familiar with it was different than what was comfortable for me and so there was a lot of resistance and I didn't allow myself to grow I didn't allow myself to adapt new ways of thinking new ways of living and ultimately be who I said I wanted to be a lot of times we as humans we be so contradictive we be saying we want xyz but the person that we were the person that we are so badly attached to isn't going to be able to get us to where we want to go. Not that that person is bad at all. Not that that previous person was bad because she did what she had to and she served me for the time that she needed to serve me. That's why I also think it's so important going back to stillness to appreciate not only where you are in your life, whatever that looks like. And this is coming from someone who comes from very humble beginnings, appreciating where you are in your life appreciating this version of yourself because you will never be here again you will never be her again when you give yourself the space to be still and appreciate it's easier to uh, detach from that person yourself that thing and that physical reality it's easier to detach that's all i'm gonna say about detachment because I could talk your ear off about detachment and we would be here all day long when that is just a portion of what I wanted to tell you today. Okay, service. I am, I feel like when I'm talking about, you know, men in the relationship with self, all of these things lead up to service. I think we all get so obsessed with how we are perceived. It is completely irrelevant. It's minuscule. Okay, there is no need to obsess over your actions. And I'm reiterating this because a lot of us do it. We lose our cool. We don't want to be seen. We don't want to be seen losing our cool, but we are losing every bit of ounce of cool that we had internally because we're obsessing 
over our appearance, over our interests, over every little thing about ourselves. When it is, it doesn't matter how someone is perceiving you does not matter. And again, we do this in effort to be liked and loved and accepted because we don't love, like or accept ourselves. So we put that love and acceptance in the hands of other beings and we drive ourselves insane trying to shape shift trying to conform trying to please and do and be everything that everyone wants us to be and i ain't doing it i i'm not i'm not doing it i won't do it i've done it and i'm not doing it because at the end of the day you're never going to be able to please everybody and you weren't meant to you just simply were not meant to but what really matters though getting back on track is your service, your contribution to humanity, to the planet, to other beings on this planet. How are you elevating the collective? How are you elevating the collective? That's what I want to know. To me, that's what it's all about is your service. Being of service to spirit, being of service to humanity, doing the very thing that your soul, your energy was meant to do on this earth, impacting the collective positively in the manner that you were meant to impact it. Your service is going to take some trial and error. Again, like I said, I feel like all of these things I just mentioned kind of lead up to service. In order to know how you were meant to serve, you do have to be aligned with spirit. You have to be aligned with your soul. You have to be open to hear, to learn, and to accept the ways you were meant to serve. I have been for a while very guided to create, to speak share my thoughts, my opinions. And it didn't always, it didn't start off the way it looks now. It looked very different. I mean, it, it looked so many different ways, but it led me to this moment. It led me to this moment because I was open. I was open and accepting of wherever this journey led me. I was able to flow because that's what I'm learning. For me, a large part of me keeping my peace, existing in a space of peace, love, and abundance is the ability to flow, the ability to be fluid and adapt to whatever spirit calls me to do. With all that being said, though, my question for you today is, who are you? I want you to introduce yourselves without mentioning your name, your job, accomplishments, relationship status, or any material or earthly possessions. I'll go first. I was about to say my name. <laughs> I'm a lover. And as toxic as it sounds, or as toxic as we know it to be, <laughs> I love hard. The things that I love, I love them hard. I love them deep. I am. I am a diehard. I am on a journey of rediscovering myself through astrology. I don't know. I just feel like if I can understand how the stars were aligned, how the planets were aligned on the date and time that I was born, then I can better understand myself. I I love words. I love to talk. I love to write. I love expressing myself through... I love not only expressing, but making sense of my thoughts through words, through pretty words, beautiful words. You know what I mean? I sometimes feel lost I sometimes feel uncertain not only about who I am but also about where I'm going but I notice when I get in that space I've lost connection with myself 
I've lost connection with source. So in those times, I get still and I start the process of reconnecting. I love to laugh. I love to have fun. I love to do goofy shit. I, I'm at a space where I'm finally content with my life because I'm realizing that life is not so much about the physical things. Life is about, for me, being able to enjoy my own company, being rooted in my own energy, being acceptance and embracing of my own energy and my own being, regardless of who else is in the room. Yeah, that's me. Now it's your turn.